Hi everyone. I haven't done a video like this for a while, but I thought it was about time that I did an updated video on my most recent process for kind of working out my soap recipes. There have been some changes since I did my original videos. My calculations are pretty much the same. Um, actually, they are the same. So that my video about um, calculating your own soap recipes in soap calc, that pretty much still stands. But there are just a few little changes and things that I'm doing now that I wasn't doing then. I'm actually making soap today, so I'll probably record all of that too. And I might share that in a part two to go with this video. But um, I've got this lovely whiteboard <laughs> and I just want to literally show you how I go through and write out my soap recipes in my notebook. You can record your soap recipes in soap calculators and a lot of them are fantastic. You can set up an account with them and you can record and save your soap recipes. But I'm a bit old school. I really love the analog version. I'm onto my third book now. I've got um, a record of every single soap recipe I've ever made <laughs> since 2014. So that's quite a lot of soap. Um, and I use different recipes all the time because I'm always trying new things and I like to make my recipes depending on the types of oils that I have and what I need to use up, what's getting old. And also the season, you know, like I change my soap recipes depending on the season because in winter time here it's dry. That's our dry season. I like Castile soaps and more sort of gentle cleansing soaps. And in summertime, I go for things with more coconut oil and whatever. So I change all the time and I'm learning all the time too, hopefully like you are as well. So things do change over time. So I'm going to be making two batches of soap today and the soap making will be in the part two follow up video. But I got these new molds from Kmart, these, um, these bar molds and I want to really try them out. I need to make some soap for a friend of mine and I'm going to use those and um, I'm going to use my favorite old flower <laughs> silicon molds as well. They're just so beautiful. And the recipe that's going to go in these flower molds, I'm going to show you how I work that out, including how I calculate exactly how much oil batch and soap I need to fill these molds exactly without any leftovers. So I'm going to bring all of that together in this one video. So I'm actually making three soap recipes today, but I'm just going to go through one of them with you. Two of these are actually the same, so I'm making the same recipe twice with different molds though and different essential oils. And um, the third recipe is just a funny little experiment that I'm working on, <laughs> so I probably won't be sharing that with you. But this one that I am going to share with you, how to work it out, I am making it, I'm, I'm just calling it flower soap because it's actually for me and my mum. And for her friends, mum requested some, of, some more of this soap. I made this recipe very close to this recipe about four months ago, and we've both been really loving it. So I'm gonna make some more to have in our stock to give away to people. And I want to make, I wanna fill all three of these flower molds. So 18, I wanna make 18 bars of soap. So the first thing I do is just give myself a title, flower, soap. I hope you can read my writing but you'll get the idea. So I want 18 bars and I know that each of these cavities holds 100 grams. It holds 100 grams of water and oil and soap is in a liquid state. It's actually lighter than water but it's close enough. So if you if you weigh how much water fills up one of these That'll give you a really rough amount of how much to do. So the total volume of soap, like the complete amount of soap, oils, lye, everything included, is going to be 1800 grams. So that's 18 bars times 100 grams each. That gives us 1800 grams of total soap. Um, so I know that the total volume of soap that I'm gonna be making is uh, 1800 grams and I'm just working in grams to keep this simple for me because my brain works in grams. Now to, to work out your soap recipe the critical piece of information that you need is your oil batch size or the amount of oil that you're using in your recipe because once you tell the soap calculator how much oil you're using and how much water you want to have in your recipe and the super fat it tells you everything else. So 
you don't need to know the total volume of soap that you're making. You just need, you just need to know the total oil amount, which is not the total volume because there are other things aside from oil in your soap recipe. So my method for working this out, and I pretty much just use the same formula for all of my recipes now because of the water amounts that I use. Um, I multiply my total amount of soap by 0.65. And what that does, so we've got 18 bars, 100 grams each, this is the total volume, gives us 1800 total volume of soap. We multiply that by 0.65, that gives us about 65% of the volume of our molds. And around about 65%, depending on how much water um, and other ingredients you are putting in your recipe, but I find that roughly 65% of the total volume of soap that you want to make is a really good amount to put in the soap calculator for your oil amount. So your total oil amount for your recipe will be, in this case, 1800 times 0 0.65 is 1170 grams total oil batch. So do you see what I've done there? 1800 grams total volume of soap times by 0.65 gives you 65% of that total amount, which is 1170. So that's your oil amount for your soap recipe. Then you have to decide some of the other specifications. And I can't tell you exactly what to do for each of these. Um, I do have other videos that cover these topics individually. But for this um, example, I'm just using a very pretty basic sort of a simple recipe. I use the water to lye ratio method now for calculating the water amount in my soap recipe. I used to use the lye concentration method, but it was so confusing and lots of people kept mixing that up with the amount of lye in their soap recipe when actually it's just about the amount of water in their soap recipe and I have a video all about that that explains the three different ways that you can calculate water for your soap recipes. I find the easiest way to calculate water for your soap recipes is to use the water to lye ratio method and a good moderate amount of water for your soap recipe. And this is what I love to use. I use this more often than any other water amount. It's a good average, is a 1.8 to 1 water to lye ratio. So 1.8 to 1 water to lye ratio, that just means however much lye or sodium hydroxide that the soap calculator is going to tell you that you need for your oils, the water amount in this soap recipe is going to be 1.8 times that amount. So we've got one part water, sorry, one part lye, 1.8 parts water. But you don't need to know what that is, you just need to know what your ratio what you want your ratio to be, and then you enter that into the soap calculator and it will tell you what the actual gram amount in water is going to be. You also need to decide your super fat. I am just going to stick with a standard 5% super fat. Oh gosh, my writing's so messy. Uh, standard good old 5% super fat for this recipe. It works really well. It's not too high, it's not too low. It's just good. Then, so once I've decided those general specifications for my soap recipe, then I write out below that the categories of everything that the soap calculator is going to tell me. On the left, I tend to write water, N-A-O-H, that's the chemical abbreviation for sodium hydroxide. It's just a shorter way of putting it. Um, I also put citric acid, B 
because I am going to be using citric acid in this recipe. I don't always, but in this recipe I am. And the main reason I'm using citric acid in this recipe is because I'm using some old canola oil in the recipe and some old castor oil in the recipe. And whenever you're using, using up old oils, citric acid is a good idea. It also slows down the trace um, and it helps the soap, especially with old oils, it helps it to last a bit longer. I use citric acid also in my laundry soap recipes. They really help reduce soap scum in hard water. But for this recipe, I'm just using 1% citric acid. So just a low amount, just to help uh, reduce any rancidity and help those old oils last a little bit longer. But I'm not selling my soap. This soap is just for me and my mum and her friends. It's all giveaway. There's no, there's no commercial um, arrangements with this soap at all. I'm just getting the best that I can out of like the old oils that I have. And then I leave a spot underneath that for NaOH, so sodium hydroxide corrected. Now why, why would I have NaOH corrected there? Because whenever you're using citric acid in your soap recipe, you need to calculate and I'm going to show you how to do it. You need to adjust the sodium hydroxide amount because citric acid consumes some of the sodium hydroxide in the lye water solution. Um, I do have other videos that explain this and I've got a, a blog post article on my website about calculating citric acid. So if you want to digest that information in a slower way and read about it, head to my website. I'll put a link to that below. But the basic idea is that if you want to use citric acid, you have to calculate and I'll show you, you need to know how much extra sodium hydroxide you need to use for that recipe. So that's what I put on the left. And then on the right hand side, and you don't have to do this layout. This is just the layout that I do that kind of makes sense for my brain. But this is literally how I do it in my recipe. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I'll put my essential oils down the bottom. So on the right hand side, I put all of my oils for the soap recipe. And in this one, it's got quite a lot. I've got olive, um, palm, uh, canola. What else have I got there? Castor, coconut, and shea butter. I'm not gonna tell you about how I decided how much of each of these I'm going to put in because I talk about that in another video called choosing oils for soap making. There's a really in-depth video where I show you talk through all the different types of oil and what they all do in soap recipes and how to evaluate your recipes using soap calc because there are some really cool tricks to it and that way you can get your recipes perfect for what you want but this is how I write them out. So I've decided for this recipe, I'm using 20% olive oil. And this is just based on trying to get a most balanced recipe for what I want it to do at this time of year. Also, because I wanted to use up some of these older oils that I have, like the castor, the canola and the palm. So I had to have them in there for me because I want to use them up. Um, other times, if I didn't have those, I'd, I'd have a different recipe. So 20% olive, 30% palm, 25% canola, 5% castor, 10% coconut, and 10% shea butter. That's my recipe. Well, that's my formula anyway. Citric acid is at 1%. I've decided I'm going to use and Right down the bottom, the last thing I put a space for is my essential oils and my colors if I'm using them. I'm doing the splits now, this is a bit funny. So I'm using EOs, which just stands for essential oils, at 3.5% of oils. And I'm using lavender, pomerosa, and patchouli. This is like soap school, isn't it? It's cool. So lavender, 40%. I'll explain this in a second. 40% and 20% patchouli. I will explain this. So some people, some soap makers, 
use a different method for calculating their essential oils for their soap recipe. Some people um, use the amounts of essential oils that are safe as individual oils and use that safe amount for individual oils and then you know add their all their different types of essential oils based on the safe amount per individual oil. I personally like to calculate all of my oils together based on a total amount of essential oil because I think that the total amount of essential oils in a soap recipe is really important and if you go too high you can overload the senses and you can have problems even if you're using individual oils at safe levels the sum of all those parts if it adds up to too much essential oil it can be too strong and I personally just don't think we need that much essential oil plus it gets expensive too so for this recipe for, for these general essential oils that that are lovely in soap and have fairly good sticking qualities um, you can use about 3% in total. I do have a video about blending and calculating essential oils for soap recipes as well. You know, each of these areas is a big topic in itself. But for this recipe, I'm using 3.5% of the oils. And how I work that out is, so that's 3.5% of the total oil amount for the recipe. So that's 1170 times 0.035 and that gives me roughly I think I rounded this up I can't remember but 40 grams approximately so 40 grams total essential oil and of that I calculate this combination of percentages of that total 40 grams you still with me <laughs> I hope you are. <laughs> hang in there, hang in there, this is worth it. So I did do a little bit of rounding on these just to make them whole gram amounts, but 40, so I've got 40% lavender, 40% palmarosa and 20% patchouli. Together they add up, add up to 100% and the 100% amount is this 40 grams, which is three and a half percent of the total oil batch for the whole soap recipe. Do you get me? <laughs> I hope this makes sense to you. 40% of 40 grams is about 16 grams. So that's 16 grams each for the lavender and the palmarosa and about 20% of 40 grams is, that's about eight grams. So that's exactly how much of each essential oil I want to put in my soap recipe to give me a total amount of no more than three and a half percent essential oils of the total oil amount for the soap recipe. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> now this is the, the, at this point, when I've got all of that written out in my book, that's when I jump on my computer and I go to the soap calculator because all of these things I can't know, I can't work them out. I can work this out myself and I can work, I have to work this out myself because I need this for the soap calculator and I can decide the super fat and I can decide the water to lie ratio, but it's the soap calculator that tells me the water amount, the sodium hydroxide amount and the individual oil amounts for my recipe. I went to soap calc and I worked this out and I'm going to fill those in. Um, my other video shows you, gives you a demonstration of what that looks like actually in soap calc. So I'm not going to show you that now. So the citric acid amount we'll just leave till last because that is done separately from the, the lye calculator. But the water for this recipe, the soap calc calculator gave me these amounts. So we've got 280 grams of water and it gave me 155.97 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'll explain to you in a minute why I've used the, the detail and not rounded that uh, sodium hydroxide. Then for my oils, it gave me 234 grams of olive oil, 351 grams of palm, 
292.5 grams of canola, 58.5 grams of castor, and 117 grams each of the coconut and the shea butter because they're both 10%. So that's my oil amounts. Now last but not least, the citric acid. If you don't want to use citric acid in your soap recipe and you do not have to, then just leave this bit out. This bit is completely unnecessary if you don't want to use it. If you've got hard water or you're using old oils, I recommend it, but it is not necessary. I made my soap for years and years and years without citric acid and I still make you know, a lot of my soap without it. There's just certain times that it's useful. So if you're not using the citric acid, there you go. You've got your recipe, you've got your oil amounts, you've got your essential oil amount, you've got your water amount, and you've got your sodium hydroxide amount. I haven't talked about colorants or botanicals or anything like that because you, they don't really need to be calculated into the soap recipe. Some people do calculate them and you can work out percentages and things if you want, but personally I just eyeball my colors and clays and things like that. I just go by what looks good. You know, I start with half a teaspoon or a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon, whatever it is, it's another big sort of topic area, but it's not as critical. Colorants, clays, botanical ingredients are not critical to your soap recipe. Just add small amounts, see what it looks like. You wanna just go more for the looks with those ingredients. So we'll just finish off with the citric acid. We're nearly done. I know this is very long and technical, but I think I thought that this might be helpful to some of you. A good refresher anyway. So citric acid, I have decided that I want 1% of citric acid in this soap recipe. You can add, I would say, up to about 3% as a maximum. Some people use more, but I think in a general soap recipe, you wouldn't want to use too much more than that. In my laundry soap recipe, um, I think I use 2%, but one or 2% is, is a good amount. Some recipes I've used 1.5%. So how you work out the citric acid is, I want it to be 1%. Now the 1% is a bit like the essential oils. It's 1% of this total oil batch amount for the soap recipe. So 1% of 1170 grams is 11.7 grams. That's 1%. You can see why um, people who are used to the metric system love the metric system because everything's all in, in tens and it, it's all very easy to work out. So we know that for this recipe, we want 1% citric acid of the total oil amount, which is 11.7 grams. All we need to do now is work out how much extra sodium hydroxide we need to add to the recipe because of that citric acid amount. And the formula for working that out is pretty simple. And make sure you check out the article on it on my website about it. So this is how it works. For every one gram of citric acid, you need an extra 0.624 grams of sodium hydroxide because one gram of citric acid consumes 0.624 of a gram of sodium hydroxide in the lye solution. So we've got 11.7 grams of citric acid. We just multiply that then by 624 grams and that will give us our extra sodium hydroxide amount. So we've got 11.7 multiplied by 0.624 and that gives us pretty approximately 7.3 grams of extra sodium hydroxide. So all we do then is we add 7.3 grams to our existing sodium hydroxide amount. And the reason why I left that 0.97 there and didn't just round that down is because 0.97 is almost one whole gram. And I think until you've got your final amount, you don't really want to be rounding up or down. So I add 7.3 here extra to 155.97 my original amount and that gives me the new sodium hydroxide amount 
to seven grams. Okay. So if you're, as I said before, so again, if you're not using citric acid, just ignore all of that part and use the original sodium hydroxide amount that the soap calculator gave you. But if you are using citric acid and you've done your calculations like I have, then you no longer refer to that original sodium hydroxide amount. This is the new sodium hydroxide amount for this recipe. What happens if you don't make this adjustment? It's not the end of the world, but because citric acid consumes up some of the sodium hydroxide in the recipe, in the lye water solution as you're mixing it all together, and the sodium hydroxide in the soap recipe, that's what's required to turn the fats and the oils in the soap recipe into soap. That's what saponifies with the oils to turn them into soap. So effectively, all that happens if you, if you don't adjust this is that you effectively have less lye in your soap recipe because the citric acid has consumed some of it and less lye in the soap recipe or less sodium hydroxide that just effectively increases the super fat amount. So you're just going to have a bit more unsaponified oils in your recipe. It's not the end of the world, but if, like me, you want to know that your recipes are exactly as you envisaged them to be and you want your 5% super fat and you want everything to be as it should be, then do this adjustment. If you find all of this citric acid stuff overwhelming, you possibly could calculate your soap recipe with a lower super fat amount and then just add 1% citric acid, knowing that that's gonna bump up your super fat a little bit. Personally, I like to work it out and <laughs> do it properly, but um, you know, there's lots of ways to do things. <clears throat> I would say at this point too, now that I've got my final corrected sodium hydroxide amount, which is 163.27 grams, I will just not worry about that 0.27 the scale that i use for my soap recipes it's just a regular kitchen digital scale and it doesn't that particular scale doesn't weigh tenths of a gram so i'm just going to round that down to 163 grams and that'll be fine so i have used this method to calculate all three of the soap recipes that I'm going to be making today. The second one is very similar to this. Actually, it's the same. The only difference in my second recipe is that the total amount of oils I'm using is less because my molds are different, that they hold less. So I've calculated my second recipe to fit these molds, whereas my first recipe, this one, fits I make sure that when I calculate my soap recipes, every recipe, and you've, you've seen this in my videos, when I make all of my soap, there's never any leftover. It always fits the molds. And this is why, because I'm using this um, calculation to, to work out that um, for my oil batch size, I work out 65% of the total soap volume, and that's my oil amount, and that works out pretty good. The other thing, just finally before I go, is um, in my little notebook, just in the front pocket here, I have a couple of little information sheets that I use. And it's very basic, you know, I'm just doing this as a hobby soap maker. I'm not a real expert in this, but these little things help me a lot and I thought you might be interested to see them as well. This is a little card that I made <laughs> years ago now um, and it's called Water for Soap and it's a general guide, but it shows that I've sort of worked out the equivalence, I'll put it there, I've worked out the equivalence of the lye concentration amounts in the column on this side and in the middle the equivalence of that in terms of a water to lye ratio and then on the other side what the rough equivalent of that is uh, when you calculate the water as a percentage of oils. So I sort of use that sometimes if I forget what I'm doing, like if I'm thinking in terms of one method and then I wanna change to another method, so that's handy. And this is probably my most referred to thing. Uh, it's called recipe making guide up the top and it's a bit of a mess, 
but basically it's just got all of my soap molds that I have. It's got Kmart bamboo logs, round muffin molds, crafter's choice loaf mold, blue hearts silicon mold. It's got all of my favorite molds that I use. And for each one, it's, it tells me how much each cavity holds and how many I've got of each. So that when I'm calculating my soap recipes, in my little booklet, I just grab this bit of paper out and I go, oh, which molds am I gonna use? Okay, how many bars do I wanna use? I might not even wanna fill the whole mold, but at least I know how much each bar will be and then I can calculate that by how many bars I want to make and then that gives me that total soap volume amount and then I can calculate my oil batch size based on that. So as I said before, I do already have videos that cover all of these things, but I thought today was a good chance to bring it all together again, now that we're in 2023, time for an update. Not a whole lot has changed, but the citric acid is fairly new. And um, <clears throat> that's it. I hope that was useful, everybody. If you'd like to um, check out more of what I do or have a look at anything else that I'm doing, because most of you will know, maybe not all of you, but I have two YouTube channels that uh, I spread my work equally across. This is Ellie's Everyday Soap Making. I also have a channel called Ellie's Everyday Whole Grain Sourdough, where I make 100% whole grain sourdough bread. So yeah, if you're interested in checking out any of that, head to my website, ellieseveryday.com. And if you'd like to throw a bit of support behind my work here to keep it sort of as free and accessible to everybody on YouTube as possible and help me earn a bit of income for the work that I put in, please head to buymeacoffee.com slash Ellie's every day and you can make a donation or you can um, become a regular supporter there, which I would love. Uh, we do Zoom catch-ups and other things. So come and join me there if you can, if you want to. It's pretty affordable. But anyway, I'll leave that up to you. Thanks everyone. I'll see you again next time. Actually, I'll see you again when I make this soap. I'm going to have a little rest, have a coffee, and then I'm gonna get ready and I'm gonna film this soap recipes. I'm gonna make them for you today as well, but that'll be in another video. So look out for the part two. Bye.